Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we showed you how to find the volume of a cone that's part of a sphere. And now that we realize that the only real variable of interest that may change depending upon the size of the cone is that third integral when we're integrating over the angle phi. So the limit of integration for the angle phi from zero to however big that angle is from the central point or the central axis of the cone to the edge of the cone, as that gets smaller or bigger, we'll get a smaller or bigger volume. Everything else stays exactly the same. We're still integrated from zero to the radius of the sphere, and we're still integrating around the entire 360 degrees of the cone shape, regardless of how narrow or how wide the cone is. So these first two integrals remain the same as if we're integrating over the entire sphere or only a portion of the sphere. The only integral portion, the only one of the three integrals that matters or makes a difference is this final integral right here when we're integrating for the variable phi from zero to whatever the angle is of that cone. So here I've drawn some of the various options that we have or the various angles we may want to consider. We can have x to be the 30 degree angle that we saw last time or 45 or 60 or 90 or 120 or 180 degrees. When we make the angle 180 degrees, we integrate the angle phi all the way from top to bottom. That means we're going to get the entire volume of the sphere and sure enough you can see that the volume will be 4 thirds pi r cubed in that case. Now notice that the general form is going to be the volume of the cone is going to be 1 half times 4 thirds pi r cubed times the evaluation of the third integral, which becomes the integral of the sine of phi d phi, which is the minus cosine of phi, integrated from zero to whatever the size of the angle is. So when we do that for each case, for 30, 45, 60, and so forth degrees, we get the following. So we get minus the cosine of pi over six minus the minus the cosine of zero, or the cosine of pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, and so forth, Notice in each case, this then gets the evaluation of 0 0.067, which was the 6.7% we saw in the previous video. But this will allow the cone to get bigger and bigger and bigger, where the angle becomes 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. Notice at 45 degrees, the cone takes up 14.6%, the total volume of the sphere. At an angle of 60 degrees, the cone is one quarter the volume of the whole sphere and at 90 degrees you can see that it's exactly one half because at that point notice that the cone is now so big that it's basically half the size of the sphere. After that as the angle gets even bigger than that 120 degrees now we're at 75 percent of the volume of the whole sphere and at 180 degrees we then have the volume of the whole sphere because then the cone is really the whole sphere. So here you can see how important it is to Evaluate that, understand it, and see that essentially when it comes to trying to find the volume of a section of a sphere, it's really all about finding the volume of a cone-shaped object like that. And that's how it's done.